A long time ago, people thought that the Earth was at the center of the universe. But the more we learned about the cosmos, the less significant in the universe we became. Now we know that the Earth is just one of perhaps a trillion planets in one of the hundreds of billions of galaxies in the observable universe. And there is nothing special about our place. Or is there? Probably there isn't. Astrophysicists and cosmologists are really fond of epic names. The Great Attractor, Eridanus Supervoid, the Sloan Great Wall, and now this Axis of Evil. If this is the first time you are hearing this name, it's not a cosmological structure that causes evil. Unlike some of the objects I've mentioned, we aren't even sure that this Axis of Evil exists. But there is some evidence that might hint at its existence. One way or another, it has been discussed for years. The axis of evil is a supposed anomaly in the cosmic microwave background, or CMB for short. And if it actually exists and it's not some statistical fluke or an artifact of observations, it could become an issue for modern understanding of the universe, if it exists. Let's find out what this anomaly might actually be and also talk about the cosmological principle and the CMB itself. And also, can you really see the initials of Stephen Hawking in the CMB? My name is Andre, and this is Cosmos Elementary. Cosmology studies the universe as a whole, its large-scale structure, its formation and evolution. Today, the most accepted is the standard cosmological model or Lambda CDM model. Some of its aspects are the Big Bang as the beginning of the universe 13.8 billion years ago, the amount of regular and dark matter as well as dark energy, general relativity on large scales, the standard model of particle physics on the smallest scales, flat geometry of the universe, and so on. All of this is backed by observational data and experiments. Another very important aspect is the cosmological principle. It states that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic. Homogeneous means that there are no special places in the universe, but on a very large scale. Obviously, the Earth is different from Jupiter, and our region of the Milky Way is different from its central region. There is some non-uniformity even on large scales. Galactic clusters are different from almost empty voids. But anyway, on the largest scales, the density of matter is about the same everywhere, so the universe is homogeneous. And isotropic means that there are no special directions. Whichever direction we look from at a certain point, the universe looks the same. It would also look the same from every other point in the universe. Let's look at these two things separately. The figure on the left is homogeneous, but not isotropic. One region is the same as the next one, but there is a special direction. And looking, let's say, from here, we would see a different picture. Whereas on the right, being in the center, no matter where we look, we would see the same direction. But certain regions are different. So today it's widely accepted that the universe is both homogeneous and isotropic. And if it turned out to be not the case, and let's say that the universe had some special direction, it could be a big problem for modern cosmology. So this axis of evil might prove that the universe is actually anisotropic. So what? We will have to scrap the Big Bang theory and everything else? Well, let's not jump to any conclusions right away. According to modern theories, 13.8 billion years ago, the universe began expanding from unbelievably dense cosmological singularity. During the first several hundreds of thousands of years, all matter was in the form of hot, dense plasma. The universe was opaque and photons were sort of trapped in the fog. About 380,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe cooled down to about 3000 Kelvin and finally neutral atoms could form. The universe became transparent and photons could finally travel freely. So those photons that became free 380,000 years after the Big Bang we are seeing now as the cosmic microwave background radiation. There is no way for us to see what had been before that, which means that the CMB is the earliest stage of the universe we can register, an imprint of a baby universe. Here CMB looks like some kind of a barrier for what we can see. The CMB is very cold, a little over 3 Kelvin, which is very close to the absolute zero, and that's way colder than the initial 3000 Kelvin. While the light is traveling in the universe for billions of years, its wavelengths get stretched, become longer, and the light shifts to the red part of the spectrum. 
While the initial radiation would be visible, now it's registered in the microwave part of the spectrum. The existence and properties of the CMB are very important evidence for the Big Bang theory and very valuable for understanding the evolution of the universe. The CMB is everywhere, in every direction. If our eyes were sensitive to microwave radiation, the whole sky would glow faintly and uniformly. And how uniformly? This is a simulated view of a whole sky CMB map of Holmdel Horn antenna that was used to discover the cosmic microwave background. Our galactic plane is in the middle. Without it, it's just a single color. Great, looks homogeneous and isotropic, just what we need. But I've already shown images like this one. Such a uniformity of this map is the result of very low resolution of the equipment in the 60s. Every next mission created the map of significantly better resolution. This is the map from the most recent mission, the Planck Observatory. This doesn't look too uniform. But such a variety is an exaggeration to show CMB fluctuations or differences in temperature. The actual difference is on the order of one part in 100,000 across the sky. These fluctuations are believed to be relics of regions of varying density that later formed into stars and galaxies. So the fluctuations are very small and the CMB is very uniform, which is very important for the cosmological principle. But the anomalies. CMB anomalies that sort of don't fit what we expect based on modern cosmology, sort of. And let's first talk about dipole and isotropy. The universe has to be the same in every direction or isotropic. So an isotropy means that it does have a special direction. To study the CMB, scientists use the multipoles. They represent the different angular scales. The monopole is the whole sky at 2.725 Kelvin. Dipole is basically the sky in two halves. Quadrupole is four parts, octopole is eight, and so on up to several thousand. Scientists study temperature variations at specific scales. This is the dipole and isotropy map. This image shows us that one half of the sky is slightly cooler than the other one. The difference is only several millikelvin, but it's still measurable. Looks like it turns out there is a special direction. But actually there is no anomaly in the CMB itself. This anisotropy is the result of Doppler effect. It occurs because our solar system is moving through space relative to the CMB. One half of the microwave sky gets redshifted and the other one blue shifted. Therefore, we are seeing this difference. Nowadays, this dipole anisotropy is subtracted at first stages of analyzing the CMB, but it also has its own use. This anisotropy helped calculate the velocity of the solar system relative to the CMB and it turned out to be about 368 km per second. And the velocity of our local group of galaxies is about 626 km per second. So the total signal of the CMB is the sum of all of the components at different scales. In the isotropic universe, parts of different multipoles are supposed to have random orientation and most of them do but not all of them. Looks like two of the following harmonics, quadrupole and octopole, are aligned with each other. Kinda like along some axis, with a small difference of only a few degrees along the axis of evil. This is a 2005 study about this anomaly and it's even called the axis of evil. The chance of such an alignment is very small, but that's not all. The axis divides the sky in halves and one half is again a bit cooler than the second half. This time the difference is even more minuscule, only several micro -calvin. And now the weirdest part. These two a bit different halves and the quadrupole and the octopole are aligned with the ecliptic plane of our solar system. Again, it looks like our universe has a special direction, which contradicts the cosmological principle, and this axis of evil even hints at the special position of our solar system in the universe. And that's against the Copernican principle, which states that there is nothing special about our place in the universe. Were people thousands of years ago somewhat right after all? The axis of evil was first found in the data of the WMAP observatory. Back then there were even some extreme ideas about this. For instance, that the universe has a geometry of a 3D donut. It wraps around on itself around that axis, but observational evidence doesn't really confirm that. Also, there were less extreme ideas, it could be just an artifact on WMAP observations. 
but the next spacecraft, Planck, that also had a better resolution, showed this anomaly as well. Now that's a problem. One option is that our understanding of the universe, or at least some of its aspects, is either completely wrong or incomplete, and that the explanation requires new exotic physics. But there are also more boring, but more probable options. Observatories like Planck don't just simply create an image like this one. It's a 360 degrees panorama, and CMB is not the only radiation in the sky. There is, you know, Milky Way and lots of extra galactic sources. This is what a synthesized view of the whole sky using data spanning the range of all light frequencies detected by Planck looks like. Well, it's far from this. We can still see a familiar pattern of the CMB at the top and at the bottom, but the significant part is covered by our galaxy and other sources. Using precise observations at specific wavelengths and special algorithms, scientists are able to subtract unnecessary radiation so that only the CMB remained in the image, but obviously it's not that seamless and there are even separate studies on how this might affect the final result. For instance, this article talks about the curse of masking, but what is masking? This is a group of methods that allows us to subtract the unnecessary radiation, and there are different ways to do that. Such masks are created and the simplest approach is to just ignore masked pixels. Another approach is to replace masked pixels with average values. There are many methods and algorithms of masking, and each has its own pros and cons. Of course, the actual process is more complicated than what I'm describing now. Besides data processing, the result can be affected by astrophysical effects. For instance, the sunyayev zeldovich effect. The temperature of gas in galaxies and clusters can influence the intensity of the microwave radiation, and that can affect the CMB on smaller scales. Also, on smaller scales, the gravitational lensing may have an effect. And most importantly, the integrated sachs wolf effect. The photons that we register have been traveling through the universe for billions of years. Along the way, they go through regions of higher and lower density with different gravitational potential. It could be clusters of galaxies or voids. As the result, gravitational redshift also affects what we see. sachs wolf effect plays a bigger role on larger scales, specifically on those where we observe anomalies. For instance, this study shows that subtracting sachs wolf effect significantly reduces the anomalies. Yes, today scientists can account for processing methods and astrophysical effects pretty well, but anyway, we can see how many factors are at play, and when there are so many of them, there can be errors. Observed anomalies can be a result of those errors, and not have any statistical significance. This Planck data release shows that accounting for polarization, no meaningful anomalies were observed. So, it's too early to get rid of modern cosmology. But... It is possible to look for presence of anisotropy, or black thereof, not only in the CMB. Some scientists look at the rotation of galaxies to see if there is a special direction in the universe. Homogeneous and isotropic universe should have a random distribution of rotation directions of spiral galaxies. It has to be 50% one way and 50% the other way. According to the author of this article, there is some asymmetry in the universe, and it is aligned with the axis of evil, but for some reason this article has low citation index. Very recently another study came out, which also shows a 51 to 49 asymmetry, as far as I understand it's yet to be peer-reviewed. Asymmetry can be found in the expansion of the universe, which again should violate the cosmological principle. Apparently it was shown by some studies based on type 1a supernovae. But then the analysis shows that this method is very dependent on the distribution of the supernovae in the sky, and it's not uniform, and that might be a reason for the observed asymmetry. So anomalies can be a result of the way we observe and analyze the CMB. Unfortunately, we can't send a Planck-like spacecraft to some other distant point in the universe and compare data with what we measure here. We can't say for sure that there are no anomalies. They may exist, but they may be weaker, and their significance is increased by our measurement methods. The chance for such an alignment is less than 1%, but still it can happen. And we shouldn't forget about human psychology. We tend to look for patterns, even where there is no patterns. But what if there are initials of Stephen Hawking in the CMB? It's a thing of a very low probability, but when there is a huge amount of data, lots of ways to analyze it, events of low probability will happen. 
If you look for weird things, you will find them. I'm sure if you look at this image long enough, you will find some familiar shapes. So we must not forget about this, especially when scientists analyze such an important thing as the cosmic microwave background. Links to all of the sources are down below in the description, and if you enjoy the video, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Bye!